Yeah, okay. Um, expedition part needs one thing. You need to hang the sign the lights. That's all we need to do. And it's complete. Um, the, um, the benches are stained. The table's stained. The uh, gazebo thing is stained and up. And so we just need to string our lights and mount. But I got to spray the um, expedition sign with a, a, a sealer, some type of sealer to make sure it doesn't weather and the weather doesn't destroy it because uh, we don't want to have to keep replacing it because of weather. Okay. So a couple of projects we got to go on this week, uh, just in case you just feel real froggy. Uh, we got to spray the parking lot. It's whatever we were putting down before ain't working. So we're going to go get some stuff that will kill it. I mean, kill it. Deader than a doornail. I mean, I'm, I'm seriously about getting soil sa uh, um, sterilizer and, and putting on it. Because uh, it, it won't nothing grow. Not, not in there. It won't, I mean, it won't mess around. But right there, I, I don't want it to grow. Anyway, um, for seven years, it'll, it'll, it'll sterilize the soil for seven years. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm thinking. I just, but we're going to put something on it that will kill it. All right. And then we got to move our mailbox. Our, our, I don't know if you all know this. We have a mailbox. It's down at the next driveway. It's about to fall over. We requested permission to move it. They told me no. But then I got a note in the mailbox this morning from our carrier. It says, go ahead and move your mailbox. Um, you know, we'll make it work out. I'm thinking, thank you. Because I had to go out and go over here, park in the road to go to the mail and all this stuff. So we're going to move it. That means digging a hole, putting it in the ground, staining it, putting the new mailbox on, putting the letters on, yada, yada, yada. But it'll make it look more official, too, because there'll, be there'll be a mailbox at our entrance with our number on it. Okay? So there you go. Anybody? Just in case you, like, I'll be here tomorrow because um, they're coming back to confirm that they fixed the leak on the second trip. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about, well, let's just take a water hose and shoot up there while you're here and see if it leaks. Because um, they came out and fixed it one time, came back in the next service, and it was raining through the ceiling. And actually, I told them I think it was worse than it was the first time. So, and, and, and I paid you. So, anyway, so I guess we're live now. Have we gone online? We're out there? Okay. Yeah, Expedition Church is live. Well, hey, guys, we're just taking care of some in-house business. And uh, I'm going to share and uh, praise the Lord. Write the post, share now. I, I, I don't want, why am I, why have I got John News with me? I like John, but I want to share us. Here we go. Expedition Church is online. Share. Write post. No, just post. There we go. We're online. All right. Hallelujah. Everybody love Jesus? Um, wish y'all could have been with me the last three days. We, uh, we, we went to Greenville, and my, my mother-in-law's porch had a, an issue. Um, it got run into and knocked off the house, and uh, I had to go fix it. Uh, it was hot. It was buggy. It was raining. I had to dodge rain, so I lost, I lost a whole day because of rain, you know, combined. I mean, just a time. And um, there's a picture Janie took of me sitting on, the, sitting on the porch when I finished. And I'm like, she says, can you smile? I went. So I'm like, the other one really reflected where I was at that moment. Um, like, tired. All right, praise the Lord. Okay, don't forget September 25th uh, is homecoming church dedication. Or dad, uh, dad. Tad Gregorich will be with us as our uh, dedication service speaker. And uh, he is the dean, current dean. And has been. I'm not sure how long has Tad been dean? At least a decade. Okay, so he's been probably at least a decade he's been the dean at, at Rama, And um, <clears throat> he was dean when the girls went. So anyway, he'll be, um, he will be with us in that service and doing the dedication, and praise the Lord. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. All righty. Let's uh, go ahead and receive this morning tithe and offering. If you need an offering envelope, they're on the seat backs in front of you. If, if you don't need that, if you need electric, go ahead and send that through a, a, a pay, a cash app or PayPal. As I said, 
<clears throat> the hashtags will be changing sometime around the end of this month, and we will notify you. Uh, we have a few more things to get. Uh, I've been calling and mailing and all this kind of stuff, getting official name changes. We are officially Expedition Church of the Triad. We are registered with the Secretary of State as such um, for North Carolina. And so we, we are officially Expedition Church of the Triad Incorporated, okay, or Inc., INC. Hallelujah. And, um, and our address is now the P.O. Box and the street address here. So we are, we are, we've, we're here. It's official. Uh, the um, ways of the old republic have been swept away. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, the, the, and it wasn't done by the emperor. It was done by the pastor. Hallelujah. And the church, glory to God. It's been all swept away. Um, and so, you know, eventually in the next few months, as all this cycles through, we won't be getting any more mail that says Faith and Victory Church. Uh, when we get the uh, changes made with the um, electronic uh, stuff, that won't, that'll also start showing up at the Expedition Church. Okay? So we're excited. That's very exciting to me just to kind of have that settled. This is here we are. It's who we are. It's where we're moving toward. Amen? All righty. Um, everybody got your offering? All right. Now, Father, we thank you for the tithe. We thank you for the offering. We thank you for the people that are blessed. We thank you that you open up heaven's windows and empty out on them blessings. They don't have room enough to receive in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe, and receive that. And while he's doing so, um, somebody just say, you know, I love Jesus. Yes, I do. I love Jesus. How about you? Amen. Yeah, you, you got to kind of say it with, you know, Southern. You can't just go straight up. Amen? All righty. Okay. Got that, Joe? Well, move along a little faster. I'm, me I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. I want you to see, start singing that song about Dave Davis. I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Amen. All right. Miss Janie's waiting on the, on the uh, younger guys. Y'all head on out. Youth church will resume a week from to Wednesday, not this Wednesday. Uh, Jess and Cap don't return until Sunday night. Next, next Sunday night late, they get back in. And so, um, praise the Lord. And they got, you know, of course, that flight's coming back. I don't, they got a 12-hour layover in Amsterdam. Yeah, so what they did is they um, actually rented the hotel, and they're going to go in and go in and see Anne Frank's house and all this kind of stuff and, and get some sleep too. You know, 12-hour 12, 12 layover, that's, that's, that's just ungodly. I'm serious. That's, that's, there's nothing. 12-hour layover, I just got yeah, make, make, make my Make me act like Chief Inspector Dreyfus when he hears Clouseau's name. All right, open your Bibles, if you will, uh, to the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, reading our foundation text, Acts 2, 42 through 45, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers, and fear came upon every soul, and many signs and wonders were done by the apostles, and all that believed were together, had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had deed. Again, fellowship is koinonia. It was the, it was the participation of uh, in, in, in the things of God, not just, you know, Fifth Sunday Fellowship. We like those too, but uh, it, was, it was more specifically participating in the things of God in, in, as Christians, praise God. Um, we're going to move on today to... Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Thank God he's good. Thank God he restores my strength. I'm just thankful I didn't have to preach yesterday. I couldn't move. And then that's not, I was so stiff. And um, I built that all by myself with no help. I mean, you know, all the lumber. Um, holding the, my nail gun weighs about 20 pounds, I think. I don't think it weighs that much. Maybe it was about five pounds. But it's, it, started, it started feeling like 20 pounds. 
you know, pneumatic nailer and uh, pulling the, I mean, cutting and I mean, and Janet, I was tired. I was so tired I didn't even drive. I made Janie drive home. I don't ever let her drive. She goes too slow. I'm like, I cast it over. I was like, okay, all right, you go ahead and drive. Hallelujah. But he has refreshed me and renewed me. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Now, we talked about, you know, according to me, we, we participate um, in, the, um, in the body of Christ and in the things of God. That fellowship is, is uh, meant more of a participation and, and uh, joint participation in the things of God, in the body of Christ. And so let's look here. Um, Oh, we'll start down around verse 20, um, 23. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. As often as, you, um, as often as you drink it in remembrance, do it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Now, going back into Jewish life uh, prior to the coming of Christ, um, you know, the, the operation of the temple was an, a, a daily ongoing thing. Offerings were brought, wave offerings, heave offerings, um, um, oh, I'm trying to think of the third vo uh, voluntary offering, um, meal offering. And, um, and then you had the two involuntary sin and trespass. Now, you know, the, you know, the meal offering and those offerings weren't, uh, uh, weren't always, um, animal sacrifice. Sometimes they were meal. I mean, um, then, but the, but the trespass and sin offerings were blood. Okay. They were blood offerings. And this, this is a daily ritual in the life of the Jew that there was constantly sacrifices being offered up. Now at Passover, the, the, the high priest went in once for the year for the whole sins of the whole nation for an atonement. Now remember atonement means covering and not washing away. Okay. It is an improper translation in the new Testament, the, the word atonement. Why the King Jimmy guys use it? Because it, it, you know, it, it really means more than that. We were deemed. We're not atoned for. We're not covered. We're washed. Amen. We're cleansed. Amen. Okay? Um, so they, they just lived constantly in constant awareness that blood was being offered to cover sins. You know, and if, and if I messed up, I had to run over, get me, get me something, run up to Jerusalem, run up to the priest and say, well, I've trespassed and against somebody. When you use the trespasses were against somebody, sin were personal things. Okay. You, you had done sinfulness, but it wasn't against somebody. It was you were sinning. Okay. And, you know, get it taken care of. You had to take care of business. And this is, this is ingrained in their culture. It's ingrained in their thinking. It's the law. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, and, and it's man if Jesus, if, if, if God would strike me down right now, I'd go to hell because man, I didn't get there with the temple with my lamb. Okay. So this is how they live. They live this way all the time. Always under that pressure, always aware of the smoke rising from the temple. Okay. For the sacrifices that were being made constantly. Uh, and all that, all the ritualistic patterns there was to follow um, from, from the commandments. And so now Jesus comes, the Lamb of God slain for the foundation of the world, who gave his own blood for an eternal redemption once and for all. And now things are different. And they're not, they're not getting, they're not running up to the temple every day, but they are taking communion all the time. Acts 20 and 7. Now we call it, now listen, if you are a liturgical church, you will typically hear it referred to as the Holy Eucharist. If you are a Protestant non-liturgical church, you will usually hear, hear it referred to as communion. Talk about the same thing. Okay. Um, Eucharist was a, was a Greek word and I forgot exactly how it translates specifically, but um, that, that's what it is. There's nothing different. 
it is the same thing as the Lord's table. Okay, so Lord's table, communion, Holy Eucharist, we're all making reference to the same event. Okay, <clears throat> just kind of depends on your religious historical background, how you grew up, what, what kind of church you were going to. All right, so Acts chapter 20. I was in Acts chapter 10, that's not going to work. I mean, I'm sure we could find something to preach on there, but that's not going to work. <clears throat> and upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morning and continue his speech until midnight. So what's happened? They come together for what purpose? To break bread. Now, this was not just to sit down and eat. Now, we talk a lot of times about breaking bread, and we kind of think of it simply as sitting down and eating. See, no, they were coming for the purpose of receiving the Lord's table. That was part of, that became part of the, the early church was so excited about this redemption that they had. So excited about not being this, temp, this temple thing anymore. So excited. And, and, and it was so ingrained in them. They were constantly coming together to break bread, to sit down and to take his body and to take his blood. And be constantly reminded of that. That we're in covenant relationship with God. Um, the word covenant can, can vary in meaning, but uh, to speak the same thing as, no, that's confession, I'm sorry. Covenant meaning to cut where the blood flows. Okay? We had entered into covenant with God. The blood of Jesus was shed. Um, the 11th verse of the same chapter. Hallelujah. Um, and when therefore he was come, rose up again, he had broken and broken bread and eaten. See, they ate, but broken bread was different. Now, they may be sitting out eating a meal, but they would break bread after either sometime during that meal. They would, break, they would break out the communion. Now, remember, Jesus said, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show my Lord's, my, my death till I come. Okay? Um, and so th there's so much significance here. Let's read a few more verses, and then we'll, we'll um, do some analyzation here. All right, 1 Corinthians 10, 16. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not, to so hear that term used, the bread we break? Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, and we are all partakers of that one bread. So this is terminology they were using. Okay? We're all one body. We're all joined together in Christ. Amen? And that we're, we're one body, we're one bread, Paul says. And so when they were breaking that bread, they were breaking the bread of the, of the broken body of Jesus. Well, what happened with Jesus? By his stripes, we were healed. Okay? Surely he hath borne our sicknesses and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Amen? Isn't that right? And then, you know... Um, 1 Peter 2, 24, for he who knew no sin was made sin. I mean, I'm, that's 2 Corinthians 5, 21. That we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Peter writes and um, says, by, uh, who by his own body, amen, I, went to, I just went totally blank. Man, have you ever gone just totally blank? <laughs> Hallelujah. 1 Peter 2, 24. Let me go over there. I, I, I can't get the first word. As soon as I get the first word, I'll roll with it. I just, I went totally blank. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin shall live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm talking about going blank. I went blank. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so we talk about Christ on the cross being broken for us. His blood shed for us. Amen. Uh, look, if you'll, in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 21, it says here, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and drink the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Um, next chapter, which we've already been reading from, verse 20, when you came together, when you come together into one place, it is, that is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in er eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry and another is drunken. I love Paul. He's rhetorical. 
He's sarcastic too. I mean, Paul would be the sarcastic comedian of the day if he was alive today. Okay. Have you not houses to eat and drink in or despise you the church of God and shame them they have not? What should I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. Okay. For I, and then he says, for I have received of the Lord. So here he is making it clear. There's a difference between breaking a bread and just showing up eating together. And when he was referring to breaking bread, he's not talking about showing up and us having, you know, a lasagna covered dish. Which I like lasagna covered dish. I like church functions where we come together and, and we're going to be starting that back uh, sometime this fall, Wednesday night, once a month, Wednesday night, pre-church dinner. Well, three of you are grunted. Anybody else go, don't care? Good to you. All right. Chicken and pastry, soup night, you know, all that kind of stuff. Okay. And we'll do that on a win. We had done that before, before we had to move, but when we got the part, business part, we couldn't do it anymore. Um, we'll be, we'll be starting that back where we come together. It's, it's good to hang out together, but we can't replace, make that, make us think that that is replacing the breaking of bread and the cornelia. Okay. There, there are two different things. One is social and that's fine. Church needs to have social interaction. It's good for us. Okay. It's good to be around people who love the same Jesus you love. But it's also better to break bread together. Okay. And be in covenant relationship together about the things of God. Hallelujah. And understand that this is a covenant. Now, um, Hebrews 9. I wonder, wonder who, do -do -boop -boop. who wrote the book of Hebrews? <clears throat> I believe that Paul did it. <laughs> Actually, there is, there is a, um, there's a theory, you know, nobody, nobody really knows for sure, but some, some think, uh, because of what Paul wrote in Galatians, you know, see how large a letter I write. I know the suffering people go, that's because they had the familiar, the oriental pussy eye disease that was draining out of his eyeballs and he could barely see. So he had to write letters really big so he could read what he was writing. That, that, that would make sense. Except the fact most of Paul's letters were transcribed by a person who sat there and listened to him. Because you'll read some of his letters. Uh, this letter written by my hand, so-and-so. Okay. Paul just, Paul spoke, they wrote. Not that he couldn't write. He's a very educated man. But, you know, so that Oriental Optophomelia, stupid story. It's in a book called Under, uh, Understanding Suffering. Paul was the sickest of all men. I'm like, give me a stinking break. Like I'm thinking, if, if, his, if his eyes were that bad, he'd have to have a tablet per letter. Can you imagine, can you imagine transporting the letter to, to Ephesus? You had to have a cart and a mule just to get the, the, the letters there so you could lay them out. No, that, that's just silly. But the, see how large a letter I write. Some speculate that it actually meant that the book of Galatians and then Hebrews was an addendum that simply was titled to the Hebrews. So it was made a very large letter and it was a continuation because he addressed things specifically to the Hebrews. Well, people say, well, it's not his style, but the, the Hebrews is not about new Testament church doctrine to the, to a Gentile or open church. It was addressing and correlating Christianity with Judaism, showing the trans, the, the move uh, from the old covenant to the new. So he's dealing with it very, very pragmatically and very, very Jewish. And Paul was very, very Jewish. He was a Jew above Jews. Jews. He studied at the feet of Gamaliel or whatever his name was. I mean, I never get that right. I ought to get it right one day. Huh? Gamaliel. Gamaliel. I like my pronunciation better. I think it sounds cooler. Just as long as I don't call him Gollum. All right. Verse 11, chapter 9, Hebrews being, uh, but Christ being a, could, a, a, a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not with hands, that is to say, not in this building. Why? His tabernacle was his body. Amen. Neither by the blood of goats and calves 
Uh, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For at the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more, Hebrews 9, 14, shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Now, here we have, you know, you know Paul's not a um, long, long way away from Jesus. And he writes his last letter about 70 A.D. Christ born. Now, we, we vary in this. Some people say 4, 4, B, 4 B.C., you know, they, 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 they got their dates off a little bit, a couple, three years or whatever. He lived to 33 years old on the earth. Let's just say zero was actually spot on. He lived 33 years at 33. Paul writes his last there at 70. That's 37 year span. Okay. Temple's still up. They're still running. Okay. Although the Holy Ghost rent the veil of the temple from top to bottom and, uh, and moved out. They were so blind to it, they didn't know it. All right. And he, and, and so, um, they're still dealing with this cultural mindset among the Jews and the Christians that are coming in that are Jewish, get to have a revelation of, of the power of blood because it's kept them clean. Now the Gentiles didn't have quite that same revelation. Okay. And some things had to be taught to them to them to even understand the significance of a blood covenant and blood redemption. Okay. And so uh, here we have Christ. He's died, shed his blood. Paul's writing and saying that he entered in once and for all. Where? To that holy place, not the temple made with hands, not the temple in Jerusalem, which was destroyed around 70 AD. Okay. Um, but by the blood of goats, not by the blood of bulls and goats, but by the, sprink or the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer, but his own blood. He entered in once and for all, and he obtained an eternal redemption for us. Now, this becomes significant because the book of Revelation, chapter 10, uh, states that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Now, we being good word of faith, I've said, uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Now, we being, like I said, we being good word of faith folk, believe we overcome by the word of our testimony. Half true. We have to have a good confession. We have to have a good testimony based on the word of God. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. And so we, we lean heavily upon the word of God. We, we speak the word. We declare the word. But there's something that, now I grew up classical Pentecostal. We weren't as much about our confession as we were about the blood. Now you get around old Pentecostal, man, and something going on, they say, I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood of Jesus. And they start talking about the blood. See that? And, and what we did, we came in, well, that pleading the blood don't work unless, you know, and, and we kicked the baby out with the bathwater and went the other way. No, they overcame by the blood of the lamb and didn't say or. Did it say or? He said and the word of their testimony. Okay. And so this significant understanding of the blood of Jesus, and this is what the Jews, uh, the, the, the early church, and the early church primarily made up of Jews, and it began to migrate into an open church Gentiles. They weren't added away right away, folks. They, Gentiles did not come in right away. We have estimates of anywhere from 10 to 20 years before it really moved over to the Gentiles. Okay? Just saying. Okay, so this this revelation of the blood to the Jews, particularly the Jewish who became a believer, was like, wow. So what are they doing? They're running. They're sitting down every chance they get, and they are partaking of the Lord's table. They're partaking of the communion, which had its roots. What did it have its roots in, guys? The Passover. Now think about Passover. Um, God's going to deliver the children of Israel from Egypt, right? Send, he sends uh, Moses to warn them. They, they reject, they reject, they reject, they reject. Finally, Moses pronounces the last judgment that um, 
um, that the firstborn of every household shall die. Except there be blood on the doorpost and on the lintel of the house. And the death angel will pass by. Right? And so um, that, that news went out. They, would, they went through all the places that would listen, would listen to Moses. They put uh, blood, and they were to go in and roast the lamb thoroughly without and eat it. And so they put blood on the, 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 uh, the crossing over the door and on the two side posts. Well, I mean, if you, you don't have to have a real strong imagination to figure out. If you draw from one side to the other and from the top where the blood dripped to the bottom, you got a cross. Okay? You enter through the door. You enter through the cross. And you went in. And, and here's what one guy said one time, uh, one of my instructors at Ramah. He said, when they left to leave, they had the lamb in them and the blood over them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Isn't that good? Yeah, they had the lamb in them and the blood over them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so now uh, this, this covenant meal that they're eating. Now, every year at Passover, they sat down and ate what they called the Passover meal. Same thing we do. I heard a Jewish, um, former Jewish rabbi, whatever, teaching on the Passover meal one time and how it became, how it related to Christianity. They, they had pound, this, this, these, I guess, leather satchel patches that made where they had leaven, unleavened bread in it. And there were three compartments. Okay. And then they'd have three chalices with an upside down chalice. Okay. The three compartments, they, they said they would always serve from the middle one first. And they taught that it represented Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you think, why did you serve from the middle? Abraham was the father of all. Well, then you go Father, Son, Holy Ghost, you get it. Okay? So they were served from the center first, that bread first. And then the three, the three chalices represented Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then the fourth upside-down chalice was Messiah's cup. And see, they, they, they taught that Messiah would come, take that chalice, fill it, and drink it, declaring he was Messiah. That's why it's very important that by the same night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and break it, said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you do this, drink, do it, remember it's of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup. Not a cup, but the cup. He reached over there at that meal, turned it over, and, and, and filled it and drank that cup. Messiah's cup. That had to be a moment there in that room. I'm going to tell you, that had to be a moment in that room. When they, all the tradition taught them the Messiah is coming, Messiah was coming, and he's declaring, I'm Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, Hebrew, Greek, okay? Amen? Drank Messiah's cup. Now, from then on, they come together, and they're going to eat the bread and drink the cup to show his death until he comes again. They are constantly being reminded of the lamb in them and the blood over them. In a covenant relationship with Jesus who entered into the heavenly holy of holies once and for all to obtain an eternal redemption for us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. I said glory to God. Yeah. Now we do it every, every month. You know, we do it once a month. You know, on the first Sunday, that's, that's our typical. I mean, now listen, if you go to the, your liturgical churches, uh, you're Episcopal, you're Catholic, I think Presbyterian, for sure. I know those three. They, they take the Holy Eucharist every service. If you're in the building, you take it. I mean, that's, that's part of their service. Okay? And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that we're wrong and they're right or we're right and they're wrong, but they do. I mean, they're, they're very adamant about that. You know, you go, you get communion or the, the Eucharist. Okay. And I think we've lost something in our churches by not breaking enough bread. Because we're not as aware of the, um, the power or the significance of the blood of Jesus and its work in our life. 
Oh, yeah, I got the word. I can confess the word. I can quote the word. I can speak. Oh, yeah, I got, you know, I know Mark this. I know John that. I could speak this. First Peter. Yeah, but what about the blood? Now, I grew up, I heard more about the blood than I did about the scripture. And let me say something. It worked. I've watched people plead the blood and get answers. You're thinking, my God. Amen. I mean, you hear Mark Hankins, you know, he said, he's always, I'm slinging blood. I'm slinging blood. You know, <laughs> it's, I mean, because he grew up in an old Pentecostal household. B.B. Uh, Hankins and, and uh, Sister Hankins, they were, they were old Pentecostals, you know. And Brother Mark got brought up under that and, and all about the blood. Now, he's a faith teacher, but he, he, he talks about the blood. Amen. There, we, we cannot go lacking on our understanding and communion of the blood of Jesus because it is what has sealed our covenant. This cup is the New Testament or New Covenant. This cup is New Testament in my blood. Amen. Now, his body was broken to heal you. His body was broken, you know, in that manner. But the blood was shed to redeem and to keep you. Amen. And there's power in the blood. We say, oh, there is power, power. What? Don't even say power. We say power. There's an apostrophe up there in the hymnal. Pull out a hymnal and look. It's P-O-W apostrophe R. Power. Makes it more powerful because you've got the power. But there is power, power, one working power in the blood of the Lamb. We were singing about the blood of Jesus. Talked about the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Man, we had church over the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. Because there's power in his blood. That is redeeming blood. That's life-giving blood. That's sanctifying blood. That's sustaining blood. Glory to God. It's the blood that, hallelujah, that cleanses us and keeps us and causes us to rise up and live in his glory and his power. <coughs> what about my confession? It's good, but you got to have the blood. Without the blood, the confession is powerless. Are you here? There's power in that blood. I mean, when you take the word of God, you could take that Bible and say, well, the word of God declares. And the reason it means something is because it is when what? Everything is sprinkled by the blood. They took the, they took the law, the commandments that God gave to Moses and sprinkled it with blood. Securing its authority. And now his word has been sprinkled with his blood. Securing its a final authority on the matter. Amen. I'm blood bought, blood washed, blood kept. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Ray Jean had the blood bought church. We said, you know, thank God for the blood bought church. They shall lift up their voice. They doesn't sing. They shall glorify. And I can't think of the words we hadn't sung in so long. And we are in that army of the Lord. We've been washed in the blood and we are going forth. There is nothing that can stop this mighty moving force with its power, its praise, two edged sword. If strong hold of bondage, must fall beneath our feet. Every tongue. Rise in judgment shall be sealed. I can't remember the words. We're the blood bought, the church, the redeemed, the redeemed, the redeemed. And we are in that army of the Lord. We just go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Whoa, I get to getting happy about it. Talking about the blood. Hallelujah. I'm washed in it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I overcome by it. Praise God. The devil can raise his big ugly head up and we can just knock him with the blood. <clears throat> there is, no, listen, now let me say something. You can intellectualize your confession. What do you mean by that? We can just go, well, the Bible says, so I, I say, 
You can, that, 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 I'm, I'm not saying we don't confess. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. But the, the confession alone, you can intellectualize it. You can't intellectualize the blood. It makes no sense. To the carnal mind, you go. Start out like Jack Sparrow. <laughs> Hello. Now, we had a, we had a former friend back in that day. Max, they rejected Christ. Start talking about was Daddy so mad he had to kill his own son. And this bloody religion, I mean, just went all, I mean, they went crazy. Became some mystic, guru-y weirdo. That was thrilling. And um, rejected everything about Christ dying on the cross and everything. Think, my God. He was born again, spoke in tongues, prophesied. I mean, um, was a little militant. When they went, when they went the opposite way, they turned double traitor, conspiracy theorist, something I know, but rejected the blood of Christ. You can't do that, and we cannot intellectualize the blood. It's not going to be understood with your head. But the Bible says it. Amen. And we know that the blood cleanses. We know our, we, we know how we have authority because of what, what the blood brought us into covenant with the father. Now, when, when Stanley went looking for Livingston, Livingston was a missionary. He went into Africa on a trip, was supposed to be gone two years and six years later, they hadn't heard from him. So he'd been missing for four years, as far as they knew. And so a, a newspaper hired Stanley to go to Africa and find Livingston, find out if he was dead or, or find out if he was alive. And so he spent, um, I forgot, after he's missing two years, he went in there and it took, him, it took him three, four years to find him. And he was emaciated, was, had been, you know, dealing with stuff. And, and of course, Stanley uh, getting across Africa, and, and uh, you know, at that time, very, um, the, um, Africa was um, ancestral religion, okay, and very tribal, it's still not very untribal, okay, we, remember when apartheid fell, you know what the biggest concern was going to, was, that when they removed the rule of apartheid, that the Zulus and Congas would go out in the streets and kill each other. Not the, now listen, you understand Africa, South Africa had about nine different races. They had colors, they had the Dutch, they had the Zulus, they had the Congas, they had the whites. Uh, there's, I mean, they just had a bunch of different things that they, you know. So color doesn't mean what it means here. It means something different there, okay? But the two major tribes were the Zulus and the Congas. And they really were, were concerned in, in the, uh, uh, Bishop Tutu was in on this whole thing too. He was, he was, they were concerned. There was going to be absolute open, open street bloodshed between the tribes for power. And, um, that's when the clerk, the Kirk and his team found Ray McCauley's church and went in there and saw they had Zulus, they had Congas, they had colored, they had Dutch, they had whites, they had all these people and they're worshiping God together. And called him to the president's palace and sat him down and said, you have the answer. We don't. We need your help. Because the, the fall of apartheid was coming. They did not want bloody massacre in the streets when it did. And we were at camp meeting and back in the 90s when um, he preached and he said, I must leave immediately after the service. I've just gotten a call. Uh, the negotiations have broke down. I'm flying home because they, they said, you must come home. We have to, we need you. <laughs> Can you think of a Christian with that much power <laughs> in a nation? They were having, you're having to give us the answers that we don't have, but your church, and they had 400 satellite churches under, 
um, Rayma, South Africa. They're in South Africa. At one time, it was affiliated with Rayma Bible Training Center. Eventually, that, that truck broke off. They kept the name because it was another nation. So it's Rayma, Rayma Church there in, South, in, in Johannesburg, and they had 400 churches under them, all the same thing, the different tribes. And as you can understand, you think, well, that sounds racist. That's what they called them, tribes, okay? Um, how many know we, 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 can't, we don't like to call Indians tribes here in America anymore? I was talking to our football coach. He's, he's, he is a card-carrying member of the Eastern Band Cherokee. And one day I said nation. He said, no, it doesn't say nation. He said, I got my card. It says tribe. And he's not uptight about it. Okay? You know, they ask him what he think if they change our name, our school name back to Indians instead of the storm. He said, I ain't got no problem with it at all. They went, what, 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 what? You, you, he said, no, I ain't got no problem with it. See, they, 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 go, they go ask a bunch of them. Shut up. Just stop. Just stop. Don't say it. Guilt-ridden honkies, what they think about the name Indians for a school, and they all vote to change it, and the Indians don't care. As a matter of fact, he said, I'd like to have that back. And they couldn't believe it. But you're, you're, you're a Native American. I'm an Indian. Amen. <laughs> so anyway, and he's serious. I'll leave that alone. But anyway, so the tribal thing, Africa was covered in tribes. It still is, folks. How, no, how, what semantic you use and whatever is still tribal. Well, Stanley starts across the country. And, you know, he might get clear passage from this tribe, but the next one wants to kill him. And so they, they, they quickly learned that one of the ways to navigate through the different territories and the different tribes was to cut covenants. And so they started cutting covenants to get through the land. And so they got, you know, they, they, they'd have to get, you know, together some goods and make a trade and, and, and go through this whole ritualistic process, you know, and, and the different tribes did it different ways. Some would cut and they'd mingle and they'd put gunpowder in it, you know, or some would do the palms or some would drip into a chalice of wine and drink it. I mean, there was all kinds of ways that different tribes did it, but they were cutting blood covenants. Now, certain things, certain elements in every one of them were all the same. They would cut blood and they would share the blood. They would break bread. Hello. And there'd be an exchange of gifts and an exchange of blessings and cursings. He said, you'd go some places and th when they got, when they got ready to break, the, make, make the covenant, they, they, they would say, now you're this and that, you know, we exchange this and that. But if you break it, some witch doctor to come out and pronounce the most God awful curses you've ever heard in your life. If you break the covenant. So much so that if some family member broke a covenant with another family member, they'd take him out and kill him. The tribe would because they broke covenant. And he, he went through, he, that's how he got through. And he would go in areas where um, they'd come out to kill him. And he had the staff of this. All he got out of this one guy was a staff with these fe certain feathers on it. And as soon as they saw the staff, they all turned around and walked away. Because he was in good covenant with the most powerful tribe in the area. And if they, where did this come from? You see, it got watered down from being in covenant with God. You see, when you get born again, when you come into covenant with God, there's blessings pronounced. Now we're under the new covenant, so there's no curses. We're redeemed from the curse. Amen. The blood was cut. The blood was shed. We're, we're, our blood has been intermingled. Why? Through the man Christ Jesus. We, now listen, and so every time they came back through an area and saw one of their blood covenant partners, they all sat down and had the blood covenant meal again in renewal of the covenant. And that's what we're doing every time we break bread together. We're in renewal of our covenant. We're in, under the covenant of blood with Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. We're reminded of the things we said we would do, of the things he said he would do, that we have his protection. Now, 
Ours, our covenant is referred to as to as diateki, D-I-A-T-E-K-E, I believe. It's a Greek word. And it means unequal. We're in an unequal covenant. Meaning what? I, they, God had nothing to gain by coming into covenant with us. We had everything to gain by going into covenant with him. So out of his grace and his mercy, he offered an unequal covenant to redeem us just because he loved us. Amen. We had nothing other than uh, coming into the kingdom. He, we, had no, we had no possessions. We had no, no nothing we could offer him that he didn't already have except us. Hallelujah. And so because of this unequal covenant, it took grace motivated by mercy to offer you the covenant. It's a free gift. Hallelujah. You can't earn it. Now listen, I agree. See, a lot of our grace teacher now has just taken something and gone too far with it. Pushed it out to a place that it, it doesn't belong. But the fact is, we didn't deserve it. You can't earn it. I can't earn forgiveness. I can't do penance and get forgiven. I get that. But that doesn't mean I go live any way I want to live, and it's okay. That's not that's that, that. See, you've got the whole thing wrong. You give him your all. You submit to his will. You submit to his plan. You submit to, hallelujah. You just give it all up for Jesus, praise God. Because he's so good to you. Amen. And so as he entered into these different covenants, he, he learned. Now, um, there's a book written, very scholarly, long reading, but it's good reading. Had to read it when I was at Ramah. You didn't get up and running around the room trying to read it. It's like, okay, I need to read this book called The Blood Covenant by H. Clay Trumbull. I don't even know if it's still in print or not. <clears throat> Kenyon, his little mini book called The Blood Covenant, is based on teaching he got from reading that book, the big book. So really in order to understand Kenyon's book, well, you need to read Trumbull's book. <coughs> but get you some energy drink before you start. Anybody ever read it? Did you not have it at Ramah? I think you have to read this one at least. Kenyon's. Yeah. No, you probably got the other one didn't read it. I may have. I can sure guarantee you did. Huh? Ninety nine cents on Kindle. It's on Kindle for ninety nine cents. There you go. Download it with Kindle. Then you can sit there and do, if you just need some good quiet reading, there you go. <laughs> but he he lays out. He, he talks about this whole thing of how. He traversed across Africa and did, kept cutting these covenants, kept cutting these covenants. And what he learned by doing that, then Kenya comes and really brings it into, you know, New Testament theology uh, in his short book. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah for the short book. Hallelujah. Um, but here is a, the remnants of the Holy Eucharist, the communion table, the Lord's table. Uh, centuries later being practiced in a very with an understanding of the power of covenant in blood and i, I just always loved the fact that when they we saw a covenant partner they all i mean they went they went forward. it wasn't like hey how you doing good to see you they stopped they had to come out sit down kill the whatever i mean have a big feast and have a, a covenant renewal meal because we're in covenant. Hello? And the disciples were daily getting together and having a covenant renewal meal. Hallelujah. Reminding, being reminded, we're in covenant. I've got the great protector. I got the God Almighty. I got Jehovah Jireh. I got Jehovah Rapha. I got Jehovah Tasidkenu. I got Jehovah Shama. I got Jehovah Shalom. Amen? I got Jehovah Mkadesh. I got Jehovah all in my corner. 
Hallelujah. Are you here? All on my side. Ready to do battle. I mean, you mess with my kids and Jesus shows up and knocks you off your horse. Amen. God doesn't do it. That's Paul. Let me tell you something. The, the encounter that Paul had with Jesus was not a social visit. He done backslapped him off that horse. Hello? i tell you what it was. It's the Mr. T anointing. I pity the fool who messed with my church. Get saved. Are you going to hell now? That's what that was. He was getting ready to send his back in out of here because he's messing with his church. So you said hell in church. Yeah, come on, folks. Hell's a real place. Y'all hear you going home. Jesus came to stop this mess. Why? Because they're covenant people. They're in blood covenant with him. And you're persecuting, and you're feeding my people to the lions. That's going to stop. Now, it did take Paul long to figure out he was in a whole heap of trouble. Amen. Who art thou, Lord? I'm Jesus, whom thou whom thou persecutest. Why? We are one bread. We are one body. We're in blood covenant together. You messed with Stephen. You messed with me. You messed with this household. You messed with me. And I've had enough. Hello? What would you have me to do? <laughs> okay, okay, I got it. I'm in trouble. I would okay. Hallelujah. And he became as zealous for the Lord as it was against him. Hallelujah. Or more so. Even so. I'm the least of all the saints. Amen. But that's because of the communion table. They were constantly reminded that the blood bound them. The body in, they, they're part of the body. The blood, the body's in them. The lamb's in them. But the blood's over them. And it bound us together. We are bound as a community of believers by the blood of Jesus. And I'm going to make a statement here. Don't you get upset with me. I am about fed up to about here. We're hearing about the white church, the black church, the, this kind of church and that kind of church and all this garbage. And, you know, um, the, the, the white church needs to do this and the black church needs to do this. I'm fed up with hearing it. Because we are not bound by the color of our skin. We are not bound by our ethnic origin. I got born again. You got born again. And now we're bound by the blood of Jesus, praise God. Well, you don't know what white folks did to my folks. I, I, I know. I don't know. <laughs> Jan said, they don't know either. Well, y'all held us as slaves. My family didn't come over, over until after slavery. I've traced, been, I've traced. My family, the tree, comes to America after slavery's over. So you can't, my family didn't. But that's still irrelevant. Even if they did, it's irrelevant. Why? Because I've been born again. I was translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. You were translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. You're no longer a, a, a white Christian or a black Christian or a Hindu, I mean, an Indian Christian or a Native American Christian or an Asian Christian or a Latino Christian. You're a Christian. Now, listen, folks, I don't even like the term Messianic Jew because a, a Jew gets born again. Guess what? They're a Christian. They're a believer. We're all under the blood. You're at the house you're leaving. Listen, you can go through my neighborhood. We got different colored houses. Big deal. It don't make one house better than the other. I live in Casablanca. 
Because when we before we bought our house, they painted the brick. They got this pinky white brick, and it, it, they couldn't sell it. And so they painted the brick white, and we bought it. I didn't choose to paint it white. It just was there when I got it. Next doors, both on sides of me are, are like red and kind of brownish red brick. My house is not better or less better than them. Hello. In one house, I've had Germans, Taiwanese, Egyptians living there since we've been there. Same color, but outside. Different on the inside. What has happened is when you got born again and washed by the blood, you became different on the inside. And the part that matters is the inside. Stop blaming somebody else as to why you ain't got to some place in life. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I've said this for years. There ain't, there ain't, I said ain't. A white man on earth that can keep you from rising to the top as a black person who's a believer. Because it has nothing to do with your skin color. You have favor with God, you got favor with God. I don't care what color, what color your skin is. And you can rise to the top. Well, my boss is a grand imperial wizard of the KKK. Then God is going to have to move him out of the way because you're going to rise. And stop blaming, get, start talking about the blood. Amen. Talking about favor with God. Amen. God's blood, I'm covered in the blood. All people can see on me is blood. I'm covered in the blood. I'm covered in the blood. So get out of my way because I'm coming through. I'm walking with God. Amen. And stop this mess, church, stop it. And we now, now we're taking it over here. And we got we, now we, we got to take an acquiesce to the LBGTQ plus 26 other letter people in our churches. Uh, we just keep taking it to the next level and to the next level. Why? It's the spirit of the world that's now working in, working in people and it's causing confusion and the church is leaving the very thing that will set people free and leaving the very thing that will transform their lives and trying to become socially acceptable. And you can't help anybody without the blood. You can go get you a gay priest and a transgender worship leader and you ain't going to help nobody. But we, we fit in. We're not here to fit in, folks. We're here to transform. We're here to change. We're here to preach the message of deliverance and freedom and the power of God. And God will set you free from homosexuality. God will set you free from transgenderism. God will set you free from not knowing binary or non-binary or whatever else. God will set you free from adultery. God will set you free from pornography. God will set you free from perversion. God will set you free from pedophilia. The blood of Jesus will wash you. The blood of Jesus will deliver you. The blood of Jesus will bring you out. And the blood of Jesus will deliver you from racism. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Yes, it Don't come tell me I got to do such and such and such and such to prove I'm not a racist. I can prove it right now. I got a, I'm a card-carrying member of the blood-bought church. I've been washed in the blood. I'm set free from the past. Well, did you ever think so? It don't matter what I used to think. My mind's renewed by the word of God. The blood of Jesus has washed me clean. I'm a different man. You're a different woman. You're a different person. Well, we got to remember. No, you don't got to remember. This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. I press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Come on now. Listen, I know people went through stuff. I grew up in the South. How did I get all of you on the blood of Jesus talking about this? Well, now that I'm here, I can't leave it. When I moved to Aiden, North Carolina back in 1969, I saw something I had never seen in my life, a colored cafe and a white cafe and a colored barbershop and a white barbershop. Couldn't believe it. 
I was only uh, 11. I'm like, yeah. see how stupid this is? You went in on one side and sat over here. You went in on one side and sat over there. And you went back in the kitchen and they're serving both sides out of the same kitchen. And they come wash the dishes from one side and wash the dishes from the other side and put them back up in the stack. And you don't know which side they came from before. And I never saw anybody walk out of that restaurant and fall dead from eating off a plate that somebody else from a different race had eaten. Yes, racism exists. Yes, people are evil. But I'm going to tell you all this Mickey Mouse social trying to fix it with all these programs and all this, that, whatever, and make you admit and repent for being a racist. I'm not a racist. Repent for your forefathers. I can't repent for my forefathers. If they didn't get it taken care of, they're in hell. I can't fix that. Are you here? Well, if you, if you say you're sorry for, for your family in the past being racist, it's going to help my people. No, it ain't. I said, no, it ain't. No, it isn't. It's not going to fix anything. What's going to fix it? The blood. The blood's going to fix it. The blood's going to wash it. The blood's going to be able to cause you to come sit down in church with folk that, you know, you heard your whole life were wrong. And I grew up around some racist people. My God, I mean, nauseate your stomach. But I'm not. Why aren't you? Because I got Jesus. Amen. And Jesus takes hate out of your heart. Jesus takes judgment out of your heart. Yeah. Amen. 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 I don't hate the LBGTQ plus community, although they say you do if you don't agree with them. I hate what they do. And they shouldn't be a community. They should be set free. Need the devil cast out of them. That's right, that's right. Hello? Because they'll go to hell if they don't get born again. I don't hate adulterers. I work on the pedophiles. Okay? <laughs> just, just saying. I have, to, I have to work on that one a little harder. Okay? Let's, say, let's face it, folks, they're already heading down that way. You don't think all this teaching kids at third, third grade that they're a boy or a girl when they're not isn't about pedophilia? It's just disguising it. Because the next thing coming will be pedophilia. Oh, and they've already said this. They've already said this in Journal Magazine five years ago. It's no longer pedophilia. It's minor attracted adults. This is the spirit of the world. And the churches over here play Mickey Mouse games about a white church and a black church. Instead of walking in the power of the blood of Jesus and getting people set free. And walking in covenant relationship one with the other. And not, and not who's better at church because we shout more than you shout. And all this mess. Or y'all are too wild. We, we are, we're, we're, uh, we're more educated. Oh, forget all that stuff. We come together under the same banner. Amen. Are you here? Now, when they bombed the, the New York Twin Towers, for just a little while, America was America. It was a short period of time. Because then the powers that be saw the opportunity to seize that opportunity to usher in more of their globalistic elitist stuff. But it didn't matter on that day. It didn't matter what color your skin was. It didn't matter if you were country or city. It didn't matter East Coast, West Coast, fly over territory. It didn't matter where you were. You were an American. And you ready to kill anybody that messed with us. Like, give me a gun. Send me. And we're going. People, people uh, remember the guy from the Arizona Cardinal football team quit football and join the service and when it got killed. But it, this was about America. This one about his football career. <clears throat> Hello. And we've got, we're coming into a season for the church that we're going to be breaking bread and have a coin in the, uh, and recognizing one another as a believer. 
and in harmonious fellowship together as a believer under the blood. Without any of the judgments of, well, because you're this race, you can't understand my race. I don't have to. Jesus does. And Jesus knows what you've been through. And Jesus knows how to vindicate you. And Jesus knows how to restore you and bring you out and establish you and set you on high. Amen. Hello. Y'all here, you go home. And I wasn't planning on going down that road today, but I got there, the door got open, I had to go through it. And it's true. I said, it's true. You can get up and hoot and holler and scream about, you know, when somebody preaches on this, on this stuff. We, we had somebody in here do it one, one time when I was out of town. And uh, I'd already told them, we don't go down that road. And we ain't going down that road. I'm not playing the game. The answer is not in trying to fix people's past. It's to remove the past and establish a future. Hello? We remove the past and we establish a future. And the future is under the blood. It's under the blood of Jesus. So as we break bread together, let's be reminded we're in covenant relationship with the same God. If we were to step out of these bodies, we wouldn't be able to tell if you had a black house or a white house or a Latino house or an Asian house. You wouldn't be able to tell. Because if you're born again, you're alive unto God. You're a light being. You look like him. Amen. And when we get to heaven, yeah, I guarantee you, we going to, ain't going to, now what color was your house when you were on earth? Ain't nobody going to care. Hello? Well, you know, were you a black Christian or a white Christian? Were you European in descent or African? You ain't going to care in, in heaven. You'll be too busy worshiping the Lamb. You'll be too busy doing the things of God. I mean, doing kingdom stuff. You ain't going to be asking somebody what, what was their house like on earth. Because I got a mansion just over the hilltop. Amen. In my father's house, there are many mansions. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I mean, when Shosheski got there, the Lord took and showed him his house. He said, this is nice, Lord. This is really nice. He said, but, you know, I got the most wins in the history of NCAA. And I guess, why does Dean Smith have that house over there? Streets lined with Carolina flags. I mean, you know, the sky over it was perfectly Carolina blue. And, and, and the Lord said, that's not Dean's house. It's mine. <laughs> oh, boy. You just got to throw that out there every once in a while just to aggravate folks. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. We break bread. We partake of the same blood. We're washed by the same blood. We're kept by the same blood. We plead the same blood. Amen. And it doesn't matter. This other stuff just don't matter. So let's, and when you're hearing people do it, turn it off. Don't partake of it. Well, they're a preacher. Well, they're wrong. They're wrong. So just don't listen to it. Maybe, now, maybe they got a great message on something else. Go listen to that one, but leave that one alone. Don't let that get in you. I said, don't let that get in you. Why? Why do you think Satan tries to get the church to divide? Because they what? A house against what? Itself. Cannot. Cannot stand. Satan will find any means possible to divide the church. In America, one of the easiest things is to use racism. Just claim, just call somebody a racist. Hello? And that, there you go. We've already got division. Now, don't walk up to me and tell me that I'm a racist in front of somebody like Janice. 
Because I'm just going to sit down and watch what happens. I'm pretty much sure it won't be good for the person who said it. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. Hmm. Even Jerry. Jerry will get in there on it. You know, Jerry lay, Jerry's laid back, you know. But <laughs> there's a limit. See? Don't buy into it. Now, one way we don't buy into stuff is we break bread together. We keep reminding ourselves that we're under the same blood. We're washed in the same blood. We partake of the same body. Yes. We being many are one bread, one body. Yes. Yes. We are the body of Christ. Hello? And you can trace back your heritage to this or to that and find out that Jesus was darker or Jesus was lighter or Jesus was in between. What does that mean? I don't care. Okay, so our art, well, see that white people did the European art. If you go to Africa and find early Christian art from Africa, it's a black Jesus. That's because that's, that's their idea of what humanity looked like. I'm cool with that. I don't care. But it ain't making you a better Christian to know, well, was Jesus really this color? The last time I checked, his eyes were a flame of fire. His hair was white as wool. Yeah. Amen. His vesture had been dipped in blood. Glory to God. His feet were like brass. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 And out of him shone the glory of God. Amen. That's the last checkup I had on Jesus. Right. <laughs> now here you go home. So we're not going to play that game. We're going to play. We're, we're going to not play the game. We're going to join together. We're going to commune together. We're going to break bread together. Amen. And we're going to recognize each other as an integral part of our blood-covered family and our blood-bought family. That the bread that's in us, the life that's in us is the same life. Amen. Amen. And that same life and that same blood will cause me to rise no matter if I'm in the ghettos or if I'm on fifth, Acts 5th um, Saks Fifth Avenue, I will rise. No man can keep me down. No man can keep you down. No devil in hell can stop you from your appointed task when you're walking with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. When the blood's over you and the lamb's in you, glory to God. I'm telling you, the Pharaoh's army can't stop you. You can watch. They'll give you money to get out of there. They did. They'll pay you to go. Hello. Amen. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the power of God. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the blood. Thank you that there's, there's authority and power in that that liberates and sets us free. Hallelujah. Dennis, can I pray for you? Which, which, which arm is it? This one? Dennis did something to his arm. He's got to paint next week. <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name, we lay hands on Dennis right now. We thank you that your healing, anointing, and power goes into their shoulder, every tendon, every part of the joint, with every, uh, the muscle, and we just decree it, that it's healed in the name of Jesus by your power, and it flows into his body right now, and that glory to God, that, that power flows in and rectifies it, the swelling goes down, the, the healing takes place, and he's able to function and paint in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 And be waving like this. <laughs> this is a, let's do some slope. Let's do some fast pitch softball. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Got a big painting thing next weekend. Hmm. A plein air festival. If you, if you have not seen Dennis's work, Dennis is a very, very good. If you need some art for your house, just buy it. And he sells it. Just in case you weren't. He didn't paint just for the fun of it. He sells it. I mean, he does paint for the fun of it, but he sells it. So if you need some, you know, interior design stuff, you don't do people, do you? Sometimes. Okay. 
He's, he likes plain air. He likes the oil outside. Set, and it amazes me. I mean, he set up a canvas and in two hours. You got to, you're like, <clears throat> I'd still be down here in the corner trying to get the, uh, a blade of grass right. <laughs> How'd you do that? Praise the Lord. All right. Praise God. I want to thank all of you for joining us today. We love you. God bless you. Remember this, that we are in covenant relationship together. Break bread with believers. Fellowship around the blood of Jesus and the body of Christ. Hallelujah. We speak blessing over your life in Jesus' name. As we go, we want you to remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. That whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Join us next time for us here at Expedition Church of the Triad at 6302 Pleasant, uh, White Walter Wright Road, Pleasant Garden, North Carolina. Till we meet again, God bless you. We love you. See you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad.